Now, up. what do you want to hurt? So, what do we want to basically, here? I'd like to know how it is that you came to know bluegrass music. What was your first recollection of bluegrass music? My first collection of bluegrass music, uh, we recorded on a we are from Luxing, Luxembourg radio station. It's called a Freedom Europe, and we hear a bluegrass music, and we did, we actually didn't even know who was that. Do you uh, know now who it was? Yeah, it was uh, you know, Les Krauss, uh, you know, all the all the fellers, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we start. Uh, Copy everything we can and, uh, and learn. Uh, uh, who introduced a Czechoslovakian country to a bluegrass music? It's strange to say, but uh, one of those pioneers who brought that kind of music to the Czechoslovakia was a Pete Seeker with his banjo singing folk music. And uh, after people uh, see that kind of music, they start searching uh, all over the world, uh, to the United States, and uh, what kind, uh, how much that kind of music we can hear, and they say, oh, he was playing banjo, but this banjo sounds even different, you know, this and that, and that's how people start. Uh, listening and say, oh, that's a good music, and uh, when uh, our uh, decade younger generation was me, in the 70s, we was listening and say, huh, that's good, but I want to play something a uh, more than three chords. What were you playing at the time? What kind of music? Before you got introduced to movies. Uh, folk music, folk, uh, any, any, uh, any songs, uh, it was even old rap and roll songs, but everything on acoustic guitar. Yeah. Yeah. My first guitar, what I have, and I learned, I even actually, one of my first band, and I, I did, was my classical guitar. Only thing I did, I take the uh, nylon strings nylon out and, and put the put. <laughs> I take them. I take them out and put a light uh, metal string. You're not supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yes, we did. That was illegal. <laughs> yes. Well, because it would bend the net. Bang it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, no. Um, I put a you know, tens. Yeah. Well, that's and interesting. That's what I was playing for a almost two years until I got all of it and uh, bought a, a Ibanez guitar. I actually, that Ibanez was so good to I actually brought it with me to the United States. I had it for years. You, you remember that one, no? That yes. dark, dark yes. Ibanez. Yeah. Yes, you told me that your whole goal in life was to go to the United States, play a Martin guitar, and, a Martin. and play bluegrass for money. And this man next to me, <laughs> this man next to me, Mike, helped me to buy my first Martin. He co-signed the loan for me to buy You still owe me money. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> That's an amazing he, story. He helped me a bought a D18 from Johnny Shoes. Is that right? Amazing. That's a great story. It was 1986. Yep. 1986. So, if, if that was your goals, then you're done. Well, there's <laughs> Betty Martin and Betty Martin. <laughs> I do have a five of them now. Five? Mm -hmm. Wow. I got a D18, I got D28, I got HD28 and I got B41.
Can you speak a little bit to the freedom that you may or may not have had to play the music and... and uh, I, was, it I was very difficult over there. Even after we you know, learned Iglesia's music, you know, of course, the communist government did, did not let us to uh, sing those songs in uh, English. That was absolutely known. As and we have to uh, make up the words for the songs. The songwriters, you know, just a rewrite, or also a write a lyrics to for the theme songs. To the, a lot of them songs. Up, uh, right now, I know when I know a quite a bit English. Then I, when I got here, I did not know a word English. I know uh, on, only only English. When I first came to the United States, was a Bill Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bluegrass, bluegrass, and Bill Monroe. That's how to start. Anyway, where we was? <laughs> uh, let's let's back up a little bit. Yeah, uh, because the, we have to, you know, a lot of those songs we was singing was not even uh, the right story. We did not because. Uh, Czech language is so different than English. We kind of make a uh, stories for songs to rhymes and the frames kind of sound like the English, but the story was about something different. You know, you know we was Banks of Ohio. We were singing as a love song, you know? <laughs> something like that. You know. It was harder to go the other way. Too. Yeah. Try and to make uh, the Czech song English. We could not weird. until until the first part in the eighties we can actually our band uh, start slowly putting a the songs and sing them in a the original language English and, and uh, Sometimes they let us, and sometimes say, "No, you cannot sing over here." One of these, you know. Sometimes we've been on a festival, and they let us singing over there. But it was a tough. What would be a consequence if you got? Did anybody ever? They get just cut? shut us down, and they just but cut it down, and the real heavy police uh, presence. With me, because I was also a uh, folk song writer. I wrote a couple protest songs. And that's, that's where I, 1979 and 80, I spent in the prison. I wrote two songs and I got a year for each one. A year for each song. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you told me before. They actually came and would unplug you when you were there. Yeah, when, uh, when, when I was uh, uh, performing those protest songs, it was kind of funny but politically yeah. incorrect. <laughs> 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 these, sure they these two gorillas from the uh, police uh, show up and turn me off, and uh, I come home two years later from the gig. But they people love the They love the bluegrass? They they love the songs I get back I I wrote over there. Oh the ones you yeah. sang in. It was Jet. a yeah uh, we did a uh, shows to I play a one hour with the bluegrass band, then I did a uh, forty five minutes just by myself. Funny songs I wrote. Which two of them was those? One <laughs> and then I start and then I play in you know, another hour with the blue band. But that time I did not finish the gig. <laughs> Is it shortly after that that you came to America? Well, I I got out uh, from uh, present a January eighty and uh, nineteen eighty when my daughter was born. <laughs> And um, 
1983, I left the country. You and that song. And uh, I spent a uh, two years in uh, Vienna, Austria, waiting for the visa to the United States. And I come straight from Vienna, Austria to Boise, Idaho. May 21st, uh, 85. Why did you choose Boise? They choose me. They chose you. Uh, state of Idaho was my sponsor. So when you came to America, then how did you get in touch with bluegrass musicians? Did you seek them out? Did they find you? You were playing I was music? in uh, Boise, Idaho, and a uh, friend of mine, Ivan Rebensteiger, had a uh, uh, he guy, and because I did not speak any English, I went visit him to his restaurant and began to be a friend, by the way, and uh, he was my transla translator. I said, take me somewhere listening to some good music. He spoke good, good English. And, uh, well, yeah, Ivan uh, lived in the United States since 69. And uh, he took me to a Peter shot when uh, Gene Harris and uh, Jazz groups were playing. <laughs> and I listened to that and I say, I like Lucas. Can you find some Lucas? And, he could not find anybody, you know, he said, it's not a very advertised over here, but let me find it, find it. And I don't know who he find first, he said, hey, I, th I think he went to the music store, I think he went to the Johnny yeah. Shoes, and uh, they point us to the locks that I yeah. wrote, and that's where I met him. That's where it all went. And my dad played there for about 20 years. Too. Yes. Yeah. The other Sundays that we didn't play. That's right. Yeah. That's right.